Now, you're not on as rigid a schedule as you were at the hospital, but you must do as the nurse tells you. Well, I hope this time you've got a nurse who knows how to mix a good martini. <laughs> you behave yourself, young lady, and just relax. In the meantime, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be looking for you. I'll see the doctor out. I'm so glad you made her come home, doctor. Marcia gonna have to take very good care of her. The condition's very serious, more serious than the last time. She will be all right. Good morning, Tom. Marcia, how's Valerie? Resting. I'll bet she's glad to be home again, eh? May I go up? No, she shouldn't be disturbed. She's not exactly over it. I was about to tell Marcia, Jim. She hasn't very much longer to live. No. What are you saying? Matter of months, perhaps a year. But it, it, it can't be. It can't. Heart trouble. But she's so young. Why, only last week. She was well, gay, shopping, planning a party. Her party days are over. She'll have to give up her social life with her high living friends. Not keep late hours. She should get away from here and rest. Does she know? Well, I believe she should be told. Jim, I usually leave decisions like this up to the family. But Valerie hasn't a relative in the world. What do you think, Marsha? Oh, well, you're a secretary companion, aren't you? True. But ever since her husband's death, you've been like a sister to her. I don't think she should be told. I, the very thought of what happens to all the enterprises. It's not that I'm unfeeling, but I'm chairman of the board. She hasn't even made a will. Do you realize what this will mean downtown? Confusion, even a panic. Oh, business isn't important now. Marsha's right, Jim. We can't tell her. And Mr. Bancroft left everything so orderly. Valerie's entitled to every bit of happiness that she can have right now, in whatever time she has left. Well, I understand, but why can't I see any of my friends, have any fun? Am I in prison, or do I have a contagious disease or something? Well, if you do, it's very becoming. Uh-oh, here we go again. Hello? No, Alec, you can't come. No, no parties. No, not even for a moment. Goodbye. Marsha, how can you be so mean to the boy? Hello? No, she can't come to the phone right now. Let's get to the point. When and where are you going away for a rest? Well, as long as we're going, we might as well go immediately. That decides the when. Now, uh, all we've got to do is decide the where. No. No, but I'll tell her. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, I promise. Goodbye. Hmm, it's a gift from Bill. Oh. Who was it, Marcia? Harry Robbins. Harry Robbins, I thought he went to California. Well, he did, but he came back. He couldn't stand the sunshine. California. Sunshine. Well, how about California? Oh, that's fine. I never did see enough of California. Just breeze through on my honeymoon. Very good. And you know, I have a friend in Los Angeles, a Dr. Peter Kirk. He was a student of mine. You'll find him. Yeah, a doctor. Well, yes, I'll let him know that you're coming. And so he can keep an eye on me? Exactly. Oh. And by the way, don't let any of your friends know where you're going. California, huh? How can you tell? Well, actually, when conditions are right, the view is very stimulating. And I'm due at the hospital now. And remember the password. Relaxation. You're acting the doctor again. Okay, okay. Tomorrow, I promise to forget my Hippocratic Oath and show you around. Uh, places like the uh, Huntington Library? Yes, and uh, the La Brea Tar Pits. Oh, fascinating place, the La Brea Tar Pits. And then, of course, there's always uh, Griffith Park. Well, how about Hollywood? Isn't there any nightlife there? Now, 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 oh, Mrs. Bancroft. I know, I know. I'm supposed to be convalescing. Mrs. Bancroft, you've got to be on your best behavior and get to bed early. 
Well, let's say we do the town tomorrow night after the sightseeing. We can have an early dinner and then the theater, but uh, no nightclubs. Sounds all right. Fine, I'll see you both in the morning then about 10.30. Thank you for picking us up at the airport. Well, you're very welcome. Oh, and uh, before I forget, you can always reach me at either of these numbers. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. You know something? I'm tired. I think I'll lie down. Good idea. There's no reason for you to sit around here. Why don't you go down to the lobby, stroll around, look the place over? Oh, I don't think I ought to leave you. Well, silly, I can have you paged if I need you. Here. Break this in for me, huh? And let's make you real glamorous, huh? Here. Jordan, I didn't get a chance to talk to you alone. You understand, of course, that Mrs. Bancroft isn't to know the extent of her illness. Oh, good. <laughs> well, I'm not as efficient as all that, Doctor. Why, yes, I'm looking forward to it. Grand. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, Christy and Don Darvall. I believe this is your area. Oh, where did I lose it? I don't know. Right here. I was staring at you. I can't think when a man stares proves so fortunate. <laughs> In that case, I'll claim a reward. Will you join me for a drink? Here's mine. May I join you? Waiter. Yes, sir. I'll have the same, please. Easy on the vermouth. Yes, sir. Where are you from? New York. I'm a Chicagoan by birth, but I've spent a lot of time in Central America. My mother's American blood camouflages my Spanish ancestors. I guess that makes me... Half an all-American. <laughs> I guess that's about right. Have you been here long? I divide my time between here and the Midwest. Business. Oh. Oh, I neglected to introduce myself. My name is Ricardo de Villa. They call me Rick. Well, how do you do? My name is Marcia. Oh, thank you. Well, here's to diamond here. rings and beautiful New Yorkers. It's nearly dinner time. We have some wonderful places here. Scandias, the rooms. I'm afraid I'll have to take a rain check. My traveling companion's a bit under the weather. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, you planned a reward for the earring. I'd like to honor it. Thank you. Good night, Mr. DeVille. Hasta la vista. Hi, Rick. Shooting for the stars, aren't you? What do you mean? Don't you know? She's the wealthy Mrs. Bancroft of New York. Really? Well, if I shoot, I may as well aim high. 
Obviously, she has charms other than her wealth. Nonsense. I met her quite by accident. And you, you shouldn't be here now. It's okay. Don's in the dressing room. Buy me a drink. I don't think you're better. Why? Is she coming back? Fritzy, he's looking for you. Tonight? He won't let me out of his sight. Tomorrow. Tomorrow at 10. Well, there you are, darling. I was looking all over for you. Sit down, Don. Make somebody just pour a drink. It's unusual for him to be giving instead of taking. <laughs> Come on, Don. You don't mean that. Sit down and have a drink with us. Waiter. Chair, please. Good morning, Mrs. Bancroft. <sighs> Why, this is Mrs. Bancroft, Mr. DeVia. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. How do you do? I'm Marcia Jordan. However did you get the idea I was Mrs. Bancroft? A mistaken gremlin told me. <laughs> oh, there's Dr. Kirk. Excuse me. Come on, Bowie. You can't possibly be the friend Miss Jordan mentioned. Why not? Well, I understood you were ill from the trip. Oh, I'm famous for quick recovery. May I put my car and myself at your disposal? Oh, thank you. Someone's coming to pick us up. Then why not dine with me this evening? Oh, I'm sorry. I've got sort of a half day. Well, half a day, it's no day. Let's make it definite. At seven? Perhaps. Goodbye. Till seven? Where are you going at this hour? I have some shopping to do. I'll be back around noon. 